Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Hey, today I want to get on here and talk a little bit about my 2020 Toyota Tacoma back here. And is the refreshed 2020 Tacoma really worth it? Now, I'm comparing this to my 2018. I had a 2018 TRD Sport that I traded in when I got this truck back here. So, is it really worth it? What did I get over my 2018 Tacoma? Well, first of all, the 10-way power adjustable alarm bar seats. You know, I had a pretty big problem with the seats in my 2018. You know, I could never get the angle right. I even put spacers in the back parts of the seats, you know, at the floor to kind of correct that angle a little bit, to get it to sit more straight up as opposed to rear down. So definitely a benefit with those lumbar seats. Number two, the 360 degree camera system. You know, it's at this point, to be honest, it's really kind of more of a novelty for me. I mean, it is neat that you can see all around the truck, that you can kind of line it up better to park and stuff. I think that probably if I use the truck more for off-road, you know, trying to look around the truck, see obstacles, big rocks, ruts, trees, things like that, it would definitely be more of a benefit. But for most of us, about 96% of us, we're probably never going to use it for that. Uh, still, a pretty cool option. Next up, number three, upgraded radio with Apple CarPlay and the, the Android Auto thing or whatever. Um, that's pretty cool. I do like that. Being able to plug that in, I didn't have that, of course, in my 2018. And being able to plug the phone in and use all of the functionality of my iPhone integrated into that radio is pretty awesome. I'm really digging that feature. Uh, manual transmission. Now, I know this isn't really a, a 2020 thing, right? I mean, you could get a manual transmission in a 2018. But for me, it is a big difference. So I thought it was worth mentioning here in my 2020. And I gotta say, I don't notice, you know, a lot of people talked about problems they've had with the automatic transmission in prior years and that it would gear search and, and all that kind of stuff. And if you got a manual transmission, um, you could alleviate that. Now I'd agree in part, because obviously when you have the manual transmission, you're of course, selecting the gears yourself, right? I mean, the truck isn't doing it, so you do have that. It's not gonna hunt for gears because you put it there. But is it some major profound difference that you should run out and, and all of a sudden everybody should start buying manual transmissions? I would say not. Now, don't get me wrong. I do love the manual transmission in this truck. It is different. It is, uh, it is a little bit of a throwback, I think, to uh, some less um, efficient, efficient's probably not the right word, some less livable manual transmissions, but I love it nonetheless. I love being able to row through the gears. I love being able to run it out. The sound that I get out of the TRD exhaust that I have on here, as well as the cold air intake, is profoundly different between the automatic and the manual. So for me, definitely an improvement and uh, well worth it. Next up, the LED lights in the front end. Those are just awesome. I mean, they're an awesome look in the truck. Now I realize, obviously, that when I'm driving the truck, I can't see the LEDs in the front. Although I do notice their effect. They do light things up better. You know, you see better with that clear, clear rather, crisp light, as opposed to that yellow, you know, halogen light that, that you get in everything else, mostly still now. So. Definitely worth it for the LED light improvement. Uh, the new grill. The 2020s, of course, come with the new um, remodeled, refreshed grill. And I gotta say, it is definitely an improvement over the, uh, the prior years. You know, it gets rid of uh, the chrome strip around the edge, that chrome look in the front. Now, if you don't mind chrome and you're a chrome person, I understand, maybe you would like that older grill better. But for me, well worth it to have that grill. Uh, next up, leather seats. I have leather seats in this truck and this is kind of like the manual transmission. I know that prior you could get leather seats like in the limited trim version, if you could find it. 
Or maybe if you built one of the prior years, which if you watch my videos, you know how the build and wait process goes. But well worth it for me in my 2020 Tacoma to have those other leather seats. They're comfortable, they feel good, they look good. I really dig them. Um, so what did I lose? What did I lose by going to the 2020? Well, there were a few things. I had push button start um, and touch or keyless entry in my 2018. Um, I love that feature. I really do. I miss not having it. It's nice to be able to walk up to the truck, touch the door handle, you know, have it unlock. I know you couldn't see that, but trust me, the door handle's right there behind me. Uh, have it unlock and, and kind of have a hands-free experience, you know. Get inside the truck, leave the keys in your in your pocket or your purse or wherever you might be carrying them and just push that start. I do miss that. Next up, the hood scoop. I don't have a hood scoop on this truck and that again is more particular to the off-road trim that I got. Um, do I miss that? You know, I go back and forth on that. I love the appearance of the hood scoop, even though it's non-functional, um, much the same as color on a truck. So for everybody out there that dogs it because it's non-functional, your color is not functional either, but I bet you have a preference. I do miss not having it as far as aesthetics go. I do not miss it in looking out over the hood. You know, it is an obstruction. It did stick up a little bit. It's nothing horrible. It's certainly not worth uh, passing on if you do like it aesthetically on the truck. But it is, uh, it is something that I don't have to deal with now. I just have the flat hood, and, uh, and I'm kind of digging that. Uh, the larger cubby in the bed on the driver's side. You know, that was a big thing. A lot of people talked about that, and they got rid of that, I think, actually in 2019. But that big, larger cubby, that was on the driver's side is of course now gone. Do I miss that? Eh, not really, not really. I only used it to put, you know, like some tie downs in or, or maybe a pair of gloves or something like that. It wasn't watertight. So if you put stuff like that in there, it was gonna get wet. So you'd have wet gloves or wet tie downs or whatever. But I do kind of miss, uh, having it as an option. I mean, it was a storage option. I had put a lock on mine um, and it was nice to be able to lock stuff up in there and not have to worry about it if you did carry it. Now, of course, we still have the smaller cubby on the passenger side. So you still have a little bit of storage that you can, if you put a lock on anyway, secure back there. So, yeah. Uh, last up, uh, and this is kind of an obscure little thing. I noticed this actually when I went in and test drove a 2020 Sport and off-road before I got my truck. But now I have more hands-on time with it, right? And those are the little straps that were on the back side of the seats in the rear over the storage areas. You know, you can pull those seats forward and underneath is a, a covered storage area. Well, on the seats, at least on the leather ones, we don't have those straps. You just kind of have to reach around, either wedge your hand between the seat, you know, the bottom seating part and the back part and kind of pull that seat up or grab it from the side if you ever remember. You know, it's funny because every time I go to open that up, and for some reason I do it frequently, I don't know why, but every time I go to access the storage under there and flip that rear seat up, I always stick my hand underneath you know, or rather in between the seat and the backrest. I never go at it from the side, which makes it a lot easier. And I think that's because I've had, I don't know, five Tacomas, something like that. And it's just uh, kind of ingrained in me that you reach in between the seat, stick your finger in that little, you know, handle-like thing. It's a little cloth-like thing, right? And pull the seat forward. I don't have that anymore, but I still try to do it that way. I don't know, crazy. We'll call it muscle memory. I don't know. Anyway, so was it worth it? You know, the big question, was it worth it for me? Um, it was, it was. I enjoy the, the additions that I have in this 2020 Tacoma. Um, I love the radio. I love the manual transmission. I love the leather seats, the lumbar, the adjustability of it. I love all of that. 
So it was well worth it for me as far as that goes. And then secondly, obviously I've mentioned this before for channel purposes, this is what I do for a living. So you have to stay current um, or people just don't care anymore. Uh, so yes, well worth it for me. I would highly recommend that if you're kind of in that middle range, you're about ready to, to pick up a new truck or something, go out, check one out, see what you think. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't before, and you'd like to know more, check out my Jeep Gladiator channel. I have a 2020 Gladiator right up there, and I have a second channel dedicated to that and a little bit of my wife's Jeep JL. That channel is called Rob Motion. Also, don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss any upcoming new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.